Um, so my name is Maria Lamardo. Um, today I'm going to be talking about web accessibility. So what is web accessibility and why should anybody wor worry about it? Well, the web was actually um, made so that everybody could use it regardless of hardware, software, language, ability, or location. And when we create accessible applications, we are meeting that goal. Of course, there's different types of disability. There's motor, cognitive, auditory, and visual disabilities. And you often hear about these four when you start thinking about accessibility in your, in your applications. That being said, you have to think that every user will experience your application differently depending on what type of ability they have. So somebody who might be using a screen reader or a braille reader or a zooming technology, they're gonna experience your application very differently from each other. I have a color wheel up here, and I actually have a color blindness simulator. So, yep, you can see that. Um, so I'm gonna just toggle through the different types of color blindness. So as you can see, uh, one of the things that you need to consider in your applications is the use of color. So as I kind of go through these color blindness, you can see that it's very, very different and it drastically changes the color that we started with. Um, so you would never want to rely on color alone to signify something to the user. Another thing you want to keep in mind is your heading structure in your application. Some assistive technology will use this to kind of navigate your application. So making sure that you're using H1 appropriately, so like maybe one time a page or twice, um, and then kind of nest the headings inside of each section. So if you have a main, main section and an article, you might have H2 and H2 because they're like sibling and they're import, the equal importance, and then kind of nest headings inside of those. Another thing you want to pay attention to are landmarks. So an application will kind of look like this. This is a very typical structure. So you have a header, a nav, main, maybe an aside and a footer. Um, assistive technology will also navigate your applications through landmarks. So make sure that you're using the correct semantic uh, elements for the job. So let's get into some problems with single page applications. Because single-page applications use uh, client-side JavaScript to handle routing, we miss out on things like screen reader announcements when a new route is loaded, and the handling of that focus management when a new route is loaded. You know, if you go to, um, in a single-page application, when you change route, it doesn't refresh the page for you, it just kind of loads new content. So a way to fix this is to use ARIA Live Regions to handle your announcements, and make sure that you're handling the focus of that as well. So there's actually some accessibility research that was done by Marcy Sutton and the Fable Tech Labs, and she actually released an article, and it's super, super good. You guys should all read it. It's called What We Learned from User Testing of Accessible Client-Side Routing Techniques with Fable Tech Labs. And what they did is they grabbed different techniques of focus management and routing, uh, and they tested it out with, uh, with users with different types of disabilities to see which type of techniques served uh, different users better. And I've actually created an app for you guys today. And as you guys can see, I'll zoom it in a little bit. Um, but it's a simple matching game. So I'm gonna just show you, like you can turn cards around and if they don't match, they'll kind of turn over. And if they match, they'll kind of stay open. Um, I also have another tab for instructions. Um, it's pretty simple. So next I'm gonna turn on my screen reader. Oh, wait, let me turn my sound on. You are currently on web content. Perfect. To enter the web area, press. So I'm going to first try to change my route, and I want you guys to pay attention to what I hear Visited. as a screen reader user. Visited. Chrome has new window. So I'm going to reroute. Nothing happened. Visited. Link. So really, I had no idea that new content came into view. I just have no idea. Um, and next, I'm going to get into the game and try to play the game and see what that experience is like for users. Visited link. Reset button. May. Question button. List 16 items. Question button. Question button. So OK, that's weird, because I have all of these cards that all that it says is question button. So I have no idea where in this grid I am, right? Like, I don't know if. Am I on button one, number 16? Where am I on the page? So I'm gonna go ahead and open one. Okay, that actually didn't give me any feedback whatsoever. Question, button. You are currently on a button to click. And it went and it closed the, itself and I also didn't get any feedback that I didn't even find a match. So, okay, let's get into the code and see 
how we can start by fixing this. So I hope you guys can see that. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I will check out. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is get inside my routes and I've actually out added some metadata for each of my routes. And this will add things like name and uh, like a title and some description to that page. And what this will do is kind of help um, search engine, uh, search engine optimizations, and it's gonna give a little bit of description for every page in your application. And then as I enter a new route, I am updating that title. So let's get in here. And let me zoom this in. So you guys can see that now when I reroute, this title will get updated. So now I have instructions page and home page. But we're still not doing anything uh, when it comes to the screen reader. So I'm still not notifying the screen reader users that a new route has updated. So before I get into the code, I wanna talk to you guys about ARIA Live regions. ARIA Live regions are used to announce non-active content changes. For example, a new route change or new content that has been loaded into your page. There's different types. There's ARIA Live uh, assertive, which will update an announcement and interrupt the user flow. So for example, if my screen reader is reading this piece of content and something comes in the page that has this attribute, it will interrupt that user flow and tell me about this new content immediately. Whereas ARIA Live Polite will continue finishing that content that I'm currently on and then tell me the new content that has loaded or any new information. And of course, the default ARIA Live Off. So let's get back to our application and I'm going to go into app. So as you can see here, I've started by adding this element here, which just is a paragraph that holds some announcement and it has a role of status. And I'm updating this announcement based on this route watch. So you can see every time I change routes, I'm going to update this announcement with the message of the route name and then saying that the page is loaded. So let's go back to our application. I'll turn on my screen reader again Voice over on Chrome, you are okay. online. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change routes. And I've actually, usually when you have an ARIA, um, yeah, like. Space with code containing window app. Ooh. Usually when you have this um, our, uh, role status here, um, you want to kind of hide that from view. And again, role, role status is actually going to be the same as ARIA Live Polite. So it's going to wait for any announcements that are currently happening before bringing this into the page. So I'm going to. Void reset button, visited, link, instruct. You are online, page. Chrome has new window, instructions page loaded. Visited, link, home, home page loaded. Visited, link, instructions, instruct. So you can see that that's already a much better user experience. I can see that new page has loaded. Visited, link, um, home. And it's kind of Voice updating overall. correctly. Another thing I wanna point out is, not only do we want to make that announcement, but we wanna make sure that if we have like a lot of links in one place, like I do here, I have two links. I wanna make sure that the user knows which one they're currently on, right? So let's go back to the slides really quick. Um, I wanna talk about ARIA current. So ARIA current uh, is used to indicate a current, uh, a current item in a set. And right now we're gonna be using ARIA current page, which signifies a current link. And there's things like step, location, date, and time. So let's go back to our application. And you can see that as I change my route, I'm adding this ARIA current to the active link. So I'll turn on my screen reader. Voice over on Chrome, memory game. Page changed, slide 13 of 17. Oh. Instructions page loaded, Chrome has new window, visited, link, home, home page loaded. You are currently so, on a link. To click this link, press voice over off. That's pretty weird because I didn't really see any changes. I didn't hear any changes. So let's take a look at our, like inspect this really quick. So we can actually see that we are getting that ARIA current page, but for some reason our screen reader isn't picking that up. And I'll show you guys again. Voice over on Chrome, visited, link, page changed, slide 13, visited, link, visited, link, visited, link. So all I'm hearing is visited link and that ARIA current isn't coming through. And that's because I'm currently using Chrome. So let's go back to Safari really Space quick. Space zero, reset button. Visited link, instructions, current page, visited link, home, visited link, instructions, current page, visited. So you can see that this actually picks it up. So that's a little Voice bit weird, off. right? Like you expect that to just work across all the browsers. So let's go back to the slides. Actually, screen readers and dif uh, behave differently with different uh, browsers. So there are best, 
case, like matches that you could use, like NVDA, which is a free screen reader for Windows users, uh, is best paired with Firefox. So all of, they have a lot of the similar functionalities and they're very well supported together. Where you could use JAWS, which is a paid screen reader, uh, is best paired with Internet Explorer, and VoiceOver, which is built in into all of your Macs, um, which is what I'm using now, it works best with Safari. So that's why we don't see it working in Chrome, but we see it working in Safari. So I wanna point this out because as you're working on accessibility pieces in your application, you might not see things working perfectly in one browser. It doesn't mean that you're not doing it right. It just means that it has different uh, functionalities based on the browser. Okay, ooh, didn't mean to exit my application. Okay, there you go. So let's go back and see what else we can do to fix the application. So we are routing correctly, we're announcing the routes, but we're not doing focus management yet. We have not started that. So inside my app.view, I have now created a skip link. So this will kind of, every time I um, route to a new page, I am able to move to the main content of that page. So for example, in home, I have this ID of main in the main content, right, in that main element. So as you can see now, when I go home, I now have this skip to main content, which it automatically calls focus to that. So if I have turned on my screen reader. Voice over on Chrome, visited link, slide 14 of 17. Visit, visited link, instructions, visited link, skip to main content, list instructions rules, this is a memory game. The car, voice over off. So then I'm able to kind of go into whatever content I want from there. Um, I also want to show you that um, there's different types of ways to do this, right? So if you go here, you can see that I'm using, I'm calling, I'm calling focus to this with the ID, but I'm actually giving it a tab index of negative one. So let's talk about tab index and how that works. So tab index is used, um, it kind of indicates uh, that an element can be focused and it kind of sets the sequential order for that element. And there's different types. Uh, you can do a type index of zero, which creates, uh, makes that specific element focused by a keyboard and in the DOM order that it is in. So let's go back to our application and test this out, right? So I'm gonna create a paragraph that is just a normal paragraph, and then I'm gonna create one that has a tab index of zero. And I'm gonna do that, tab index of zero. I'm gonna go back to my application so you can see both of my paragraphs. So I'm going to just tab, tab, tab. So you can see that I skipped that first paragraph and went straight to that, that paragraph that had tab, tab index of zero. So again, you can kind of call um, elements that aren't semantically focusable um, into this focusing, focus order. Um, then we have tab index of any positive number, so anything greater than one, uh, than zero. Um, and then this makes the element focusable, but it actually jumps the DOM order and kind of goes on top of everything. So let's test that out. So I will create, I'll actually create two. Um, actually, yeah. So I'll do one, and then I'll create another one with two. So this one's actually, it looks weird, so I refresh my page, I'm gonna tab once, and it actually goes to the tab index of one, then if I tab again, it's gonna go tab index of two, and if I had three, four, five, it'll go in that order. And once I tab out of those positive numbers, then it goes back to the DOM order that the page it's in. So it's kind of going backwards. Um, now, I do wanna mention that this exists, but it is something that you want to avoid using as, as it can get very complicated and hard for users who are, uh, hard for keyboard users to navigate your applications. Imagine you have a tab index of like 12 elements on your page and then you start adding something in between those elements and then you have to update all your tab indexes so that it matches. Um, so just make sure that you're just using your DOM order to call focus in, in your elements. And then we have tab index of negative one. Now this works differently than the other, tab, uh, than the other numbers. Um, this one uh, is, it allows your element to be focused programmatically. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So we have tab index of negative one. And I'm gonna tap, try to tap through it. So again, we go to one, two, then the DOM order. And it completely skipped that tab index of negative one. So you can't really access it by a keyboard with the tabbing, but what it allows you to do is you can actually call focus to it with a method. So 
Every time I click this new game button, I'm going to, oh, wait, I will give this, yeah, I will give this paragraph a ref of, I don't know, tab here. Um, so every time I click this new game, I'm going to focus on it. So I'm gonna refresh, and I'm gonna just tap through that reset, which starts a new game. And you could see that it actually called back to that tab index of negative one. And that's actually why um, I'm able to have that focus ring around this main, main uh, content. So let me show you what that looks like if I were to delete that tab index of negative one up there. And I were to hit that, um, that go, main, go to main content link. And I'm actually gonna show you with this tool that I have that kind of tracks um, where your focus is at at all times. So if I skip to the main content, it kind of moves the page down, but the focus is actually on the body. Like, because the main element isn't tabable by default. But if we were to add that tab index of negative one, and then we use that same thing, so I'm going to go, skip to main content, now it's truly focused in that main. Great, so next I'm going to show you other fixes for this application. So here we're actually gonna get into the gameplay of things. So we have fixed a couple of things. We've fixed the routes and um, focus management, but the gameplay is still the same. Um, so let's go to our home, which is where our game is at. Um, and you can see that I've added a couple of things. So for every button, which is the card, and I've actually cheated so I could know the answers beforehand, <laughs> but um, you can see that I've added things like ARIA label, ARIA described by, and even up here in the main, I've even added ARIA, uh, ARIA labeled by. So let's go back to our um, slides and talk a little bit about accessible names and how you can use ARIA to give those um, elements accessible names. So we have ARIA label, which provides essential information about an object. So this grabs that element and gives it its accessible name. And you want to use ARIA label when that content does not currently exist on the page. For example, if you have a modal and you have an X on the top, right? That's usually an icon. There is no, the, the word close doesn't really exist anywhere on that modal. So you might use something like an ARIA label to give that X icon uh, an accessible name. And that should be a button, by the way. <laughs> and then ARIA labeled by works the same way that it will kind of give it the, the accessible name for the element, but you're actually pairing it to something that already exists on the, web, on the page. So if there, if there was something on the page that said close, you might say like, hey, the, el the, name for, the accessible name for this element is actually paired with, here, with this other element, and you're gonna pair them with an ID. And I'll show you this on the code. And ARIA described by will provide uh, extra information that the user might need to, and it's linked the same way as an ARIA labeled by. So let's see how I've implemented some of these. So you could see that I've used ARIA labeled by uh, inside the main, so now every time that the main content gets focused, I actually want to announce some sort of name, right? So every time that that main gets content, that focused, I want to give it the label of this title. So I've paired ARIA labeled by with this game title, which should be Game Board. And I'm not gonna show you this with a screen reader because I want to show you this um, with some accessibility tools that are inside of uh, the Chrome DevTools. So I've selected my main, and I'm going to go into my accessibility tab down here. And all the way down, you can see that it has the accessible name. So you could see that my accessible name for that main element is game board, and it is receiving it through this aria labeled by, which is getting it from this game title ID, who has a content value of game board. So if I turn on my screen reader. Voice over on visited, visited, visited link. Skip to main content, memory game board, group game board, main. So it told me that it was a game board and that it's a main element. Um, so you can see that that's Voice a much off. better experience and that's um, where you would use ARIA labeled by. Now ARIA label um, is used on all of those cards. So all of those cards don't really have anything. They're just literally question marks as we heard before. Um, so now I'm saying if the card is flipped, then give me back the card name uh, and then tell me that it is flipped. Else, just tell me the card 
and then the index number, so that I at least can keep track of where I am on the page. And then I've given an aria described by, which again gives me additional information about this content. And then I will use, and I will um, get back the value of game update. And this is actually in my store. And game update will give me back, um, you have this number of moves and with a total uh, of this many stars left. So let's go to our application and see what that looks like with the screen reader. Voice over on Chrome, you are online. Reese, card one, button list 16 items. Card two, button. Card three, button. Card four, button. So I now know at least where I am on the page and what button I'm specifically on. And now I will flip one of the cards over. Paw flipped. Hey, now I know what I flipped. Card five, button. Diamond flipped. No match. You have two total moves with three stars left. So it told me that I had no match. It closed it. It told me that it closed it. It told me how, much, how many moves I had and how many stars I had left. Um, so that's Voice way overall. more content than I had before. So I'm giving the ARIA label. And then in the actions, I'm also updating this. So as I flip a card, I am updating. If the card's already flipped, tell it, hey, your card's already flipped. If it's not, then we're going to say this card was flipped. If there was a match, then we're gonna say, hey, match found. You have this many matches left in your game. If you made an, if you made an error, then you will say, hey, um, this card was flipped, but there was no match. Uh, and then of course, we'll talk about this in the next step, um, our winning message. So let's get into that now. So what happens when you win the game? We want to be able to announce that. Um, and then I have this winning component, which again, I'm calling focus to it. Well, let me show you guys in the application first, I guess. Um, let me go to the store and kind of <laughs> cheat a little bit. I will com comment out a lot, of the <laughs> a lot of the content. Voice over on Chrome, you are online. Reset button, card two button, card one button, car flipped, card two button, bug flipped, no match. Card three button, bug flipped. Card two button, bug flipped. Match found, card one button, car flipped. And as you can see now that the middle cards have been flipped and matched, I've actually disabled any matched cards so that as I'm tabbing through it, I don't have to tab through kind of useless cards, right? You're not gonna click on them, so you shouldn't be able to tab on them. Card four button, heading level two. Congratulations, memory game board group. You won the game with three stars left. You, you are can see that overall. I get focus and I get the announcement with how many um, moves and stars I won the game with. And I do that with um, this component. And, I get, and again, I gave this H2 a tab index of negative one so I can tap to it right with focus. But because it's in a different component, we have to handle this a little bit differently. We can't just call an ID and call focus to it. So we can actually make a directive. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. And this is actually just in my main JS. And it just says, hey, when this element is inserted, just call focus to that element. So again, we have this, um, we have this directive calling this element, which has a tab index of negative one, so it's able to call it. And we're using aria labeled by a little bit differently here. So we are saying, um, we're giving it two IDs. And one of the IDs, it's actually the H2 that we're currently on. So it's telling us congratulations, and we are pairing it also with the uh, winning message, which is displayed here in the middle of the page. Um, so you can see that it will call congratulations. I'm gonna say you, you won. Um, so you can see that it will be different. So let's reset. Voice over, reset reader. card one, button list four item, bug flipped, page changed, slide 16 of 17, card two button, C card three but card two button, car flipped, matched card one button, bug flipped, card four button, heading level two, congratulations you w o n n n <laughs> memory game board group, you won the game with three stars left. So that brings a great point, should you ever capitalize your content? So certain screen readers will pick up capitalized letters and then it won't catch it as a word, but it will actually go and spell it out. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as you're creating your applications, that really uh, think about the design and if you absolutely need to capitalize your letters because it will cause um, errors with screen readers. But yes, um, I hope you guys enjoyed my talk. Voice uh, over off. And I hope that you guys all build accessible applications from here on out. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.